<laughs> we'll give you all a minute. Yeah, it's just, this is one of these things where, you know, I just I just do what I do when I do what I do. And you say, but Jim, you should you should you should let us know. Uh, I'm letting you know. <laughs> I'm going to sit here and play for a minute. Some of y'all may have still been around. some live streams have like pretty little interlude music in the beginning to allow folks to kind of find their way here. Uh, I guess I'm that interlude music. <laughs> Who all we got? I'll speak up. Can you hear me okay? And really, I, I had no clue that I was going to do this. Um, it, it's just, it was just one of these things that it just seemed like, well, I'm sitting here. What else am I going to do? And I had this great idea. It, it, and one of my, one of my p p patrons had mentioned this idea. And, and sometimes, you know, what might make a good lesson might not make a good YouTube lesson, but I was thinking it might make a good YouTube live stream kind of lesson. So, uh, so and it gives you all a chance to, to hang out, ask questions and stuff. So, hey, Clint, uh, Randy, hello. If you see me looking down, I, I've got words down here that I can actually read. I can't I can barely see up here on the screen, so. Oh, you've been burning branches. <laughs> well, you know. cuff I'm not really sure kind of goes to the C there I, ha I, ha I have a somewhat limited uh, melodic vocabulary here let me see if I can adjust so I don't have to so I don't have to go into Jim Panky mode <laughs> on that door. I need to tone that down. All right, let's see here. What all does my Patreon include? My Patreon doesn't include much. All that you're actually going to get extra with the Patreon is tabs to stuff. Not my beginner lessons, but anytime that I tab a song, uh, I usually share those on the Patreon. And, the, and that's really pretty much it. Uh, it's just a way for folks to give back uh, for all of the free stuff that's out here on on YouTube. Uh, so yeah, I, I 
I, I, I can barely keep up that content plus exclusive content for patrons. So I really don't do that. A lot of times I will go ahead and post, like if I make up videos early for some topic, those will go out to the patrons, you know, a few days ahead of time. So you, you get you get an early view, but you really don't, there's really nothing extra except for tabs. And I mean, and, and you can you can see that, like if you go to my Patreon, and you can see what you get. I mean, it's, I, I basically just sell the opportunity to help out if you want to. Um. Thanks, Connor. Yeah, that's basically it. I mean, that that that's the big thing. Uh, Patreon. I, I mean, just consider consider it a, don a donation. You know, it's just consider it a way of helping me figure thing. You know, continue to do c continuing to do things for free at a small cost if you're on my Patreon. Uh, here so let's let's talk about the the topic at hand is playing a song in a different key y you may have learned a song in a key you probably did i mean if you learned a song you learned it in a specific key we know that to be the truth and but as you play and as you hang out with other people you're going to discover that that key that you may have learned that song in is not good for the singer, especially if it's a singing song. Now, if it's a picking song, chances are you're not really going to have to do anything really weird uh, for that. You you can you can just pick it in the key. I mean, you may have learned it in G, and then a the mandolin player is going to say, "Oh, I do that one in A." Oh, okay, so you capo up. That's cool. And so that for for me. That was one of the first ways that I understood how to play in a different key. So I learned Cripple Creek. Well, I learned Cripple Creek off the Flat and Scruggs album, uh, Foggy Mountain Banjo album. So obviously I learned it. I learned it in the key of A. All right. And then a few years ago, I, you know, I mean that's just that's just where Cripple Creek is. Cripple Creek is for most fiddle players, mandolin players. They just play an A. It just makes sense. And if you play mandolin or fiddle, you understand why. But every now and then, I, like I hung out with Roland White a while back, and and, and Roland said, "Hey, play a song." I said, what do you want to play? He says, "Play Cripple Creek." I'm thinking, well, "What key do you want Cripple Creek in?" I said, "You want an A?" He says, "I do it in G." Okay, do it in G. So we did Cripple Creek in G. But that's not a big deal because using a capo makes makes those sorts of changes easy. <coughs> but when I was a younger younger guy, <coughs> excuse me, pre-driver's license, I was playing banjo with James and Mary Paget. They lived south of here and both you know both good musicians mary was on the uh, adoram bluegrass label record label and james too and i was playing banjo with them and so mary was she was the primary singer great voice uh, you know and really the the queen of bluegrass music back then and but Come to find out, like the first time I went down to play with, play with her, songs that I knew were were in a were in a different key, and the there became my exploration into figuring out breaks to songs in in new keys. So that's. Uh, Hang on a second. I gotta deal with the text message. <laughs> and 
And so I, I was, I was forced to do it, you know. So, I, and and I, and I don't have any songs right right off hand, but it was, it it was pretty important to be able to do that. And so let let let's take a bluegrass. Let's take just a standard bluegrass song that we all know and love. What would that be? Y'all 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 give me a y'all give me a. a Give me a tune that I'm going to know. Standard bluegrass, something that's going to come up in a jam. I'm going to let y'all pick if you're listening. And I know there's a lag. <laughs> Blue Ridge Cabin Home. There you go, Dwayne. All right, Blue Ridge Cabin Home. We'll take that one. And, and, and I think that might have been one that we probably did. I, I know we probably did it in... Uh, well, nobody was singing Grandfather's Clock. That's an instrumental, so that one we didn't have to worry about. Fireball Mail was, back then, nobody was singing it. I mean, it had dropped out of favor as far as singing. So Blue Ridge Cabin Home's a good vocal tune that, that I'm pretty sure that Mary sang. And Blue Ridge Cabin Home, I, you know, it's one of those, it's one of those that we do out of G position. <laughs> Old home plays. Thanks, Peter. So let's do old home plays. That that's a good one because it's weird. It's got a weird chord change. Even in the chorus, you know, you got you. you so it's got. It has in the vernacular that I heard growing up around this music, I heard off chord. What's that off chord? Meaning the chord that's not, you know, G, C, or D. So in Old Home Place, we've got, in the key of G, we've got G, B, C, and, and G. It's been ten long years since I left my home in a hollow where I was born. Where the cold fall nights make the wood smoke rise and the fox hunter blows his horn. Alright, so it goes to that B. How many of y'all did my Nashville number system lesson recently that I posted? Any any takers on that? Because we're gonna need it. We're gonna kind of kind of gonna need it. Well, we don't need it, need it. But boy, it sure makes this really helpful. Uh, and it make it's very helpful and makes this a little easier. Let, let's put it that way. Uh, uh, let's see. Thanks, Dream Cruiser. So. So I so I go to C. So that's in G. It's been ten long years since I left my home and the where I was. It's in G. That's where I sing it. And and sometimes you'll go to a bluegrass jam and you'll have somebody with a higher voice and they'll say we're we're going to do we're going to do that one in the key of A. All right, that's easy enough. It's been ten long. Since I left my home in the where I was born. So we got A covered. Heck, we even got B covered because we're still playing out of a G position. It's been ten long years since I left my home in the where I was born. It's getting on up there for me, me being a, I don't have a high voice. So those keys I can manage. Oh, you want a B flat? Fine. You want A flat? Fine. You know, because they were all iterations of this 
I, I didn't have to change what I knew with my left hand. I, I'm still playing the same thing. But here I am, 15 years old, 15 years old, and uh, playing with Mary Paget. And Mary says, let's do Old Home Place. She says, but I do it in the key of F. Now, holy cow, key of F. How, how are we going to get to the key of F? And I'll be straight up with you. When, when, when I was, when I was uh, 15, I probably didn't even know what chords went with the key of F. And, and so I, I'm scrambling in my brain to figure that out. So I'm thinking, okay, in G, it goes from G to B. So in F, what's it do? I don't know. And I'm thinking, well, I've, I, I've, got, to, I've got to figure out where this is going to go. So I'm thinking, well, I could capo to the fifth fret if I wanted to and play out of C position, or I could capo to the third fret and play out of D position. I, you know, I, I was kind of puzzled as to what I was going to do, but I figure, let's just play it out of F because I'd never done that before. Can I come up with a break to old home place in F? So we got to figure out what our keys are. What, what are our chords? So the first thing, first thing we got to do, is, and so what I do first is, is I figure out what my chords are. What are my chords? And in, in this song, we, we know it's going to go one, three, four, one. If you've done my national number system, you know what we're talking about. So in G, it's G is the one, B is the three, four is C, and back to the one. It's been 10 long years since I left my home. So we're just going to go that far, just to keep things short and simple. So let's, all right, so what are... What's, what's the one in the key of F? I'll wait for an answer. Uh, <laughs> I'm waiting for my answer is what is the one in the key of F? Thank you, Mason. It's an F. So we know it goes one, and then it goes to the three. So what would my three be in, in the key of F? What would my three be? Y'all know your alphabet, right? So F is one. F. What comes after F in the musical alphabet? G. What comes after G in the musical alphabet? Mason's already named it A. So we're going from F to A. And now where are we going next? Where are we going next? We got, it's been 10, it's been 10 long years since. What's our next chord? What comes after A in the musical alphabet? B, but it's not B. So let's, so no more answers for a second. So if we go, so let's try a B, see if it works. It's been 10 long years since I... That's not right. It's B flat. It's B flat in the key of F because we have in the key of F a B flat. Okay. Why? How do I know that? At some point, I probably just memorized it. All right. So let's look at that. So we got, so let's just play that. 
so we so now we know our chords. It's been two long years since I left my home and I hung where I was. And it goes to the five, which is a C. Boom. Where the cool fall nights make the world we know our chords for the verse of what song we playing <laughs> hold on place don't get old people uh so so now now we have we now we have our chords now all i'm doing at this point is i am just in the background of this jam playing the chords that I have just figured out on the fly with a roll. I'm not doing it. What? Okay, y'all can't see my roll, but what roll am I playing here? This is bonus question. Mason, you can't answer, neither can you, Dwayne. <laughs> I know you can't see my right hand, which you don't need my right hand. You just need your ears. You just need your ears. It's an alternating roll. It's a four, two, five, one, three, two, five. Thumb index, thumb middle is what's going on there. It doesn't matter what string. I mean, you can do an alternating roll on the first string. It's thumb index, thumb middle. You can trust me. <laughs> So it's an alternating roll. So, and and it works for old home place. So let's do that again. It's been ten long years since I left my home, and I hung where I was born. Where the So the break comes around to us. What if I don't really have a break yet? And I know at some point they're going to look at me and say, at maybe the next jam, Jim, kick off old home place. And so I've got to have a kickoff. So what you need to do is we need to try different roles. So try it with a forward and reverse roll. It's been since I And start listening to see if any of the notes that you are playing is actually a note that you're singing. Mm. This is how we're going to build our break. We're going to take the melody and cram it into some roles that we're playing and hope for the best. So let's let's see what we've got. So as I'm doing that, it's been 10. So the very first note in our forward and reverse roll or alternating roll is that third string in F. So it's been 10 long years since I, I, I don't have a melody note for my B flat, but check it out. So we kind of have... It's been 10 long years since I left. Uh, 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 uh. So I don't have one there. 10 long years since I, uh, uh. So I 
left my home. And so you, you hear what I'm doing. I, I am singing the melody note, and then I'm hunting it on the banjo. It's been ten long years since I left my so there's melody now. So I, I just hunt and peck until I find it. And you think, oh, I don't have all day to hunt and peck. What else you got to do? How are you going to get better at this if you don't sit and hunt and peck and figure out where the notes are? You say, but Jim, I could just go to the internet and get a tab for old home place and F. You can't? Really? No, you can't. You can't do that. It's not going to happen. Because here's what's going to happen. You're going to get back with Mary the next week and she's going to say, you know, I really don't do that in F all that well. I, I think I want to do that E flat. It's like, oh, crap, now i got to go back. This is pre-internet. You know, we didn't have internet when I was a kid. And I know that's hard to believe. Uh, but I s sit and hunt that melody. So let's, let's try this again. It's been 10 long years since I left my home. We got melody notes right in their chords. Cool. So that's a third string. Most of the melody that most of the melody notes are going to live somewhere near the chords that we're playing. And now I kind of almost have I almost have a break in my head for doing this. Okay? So let's let's see what we've got. So I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna push y'all down here so you can watch both hands a little bit. Y'all don't need my pretty face. Here we go. So here we go. And, and we're just gonna do we're just gonna do forward and reverse roll here. So we are we're in the key F. We're doing old home place. It's been ten long years since I left my home in a home where I was born. Ooh, I did a hammer on just because it felt good. Sometimes it's good to do things that feel good. All right, so here's our break. So it comes around to us in the jam. So we're going to do this. I'm just trusting my brain to tell me what to do. So to emphasize our melodies, I'm doing a hammer on. Okay, I do a walk up. Two notes. Da, da. And I'm gonna hammer this note for my melody. And then I'm gonna slide to the A. All right, so now we've, it's starting to sound like a banjo break. can slide up to the B flat because, well, we're cool. And then we're going to go back down to the, back down to the F. Then we're going to hammer that fourth string. Why? Because it feels good. All right, here we go. Now we've got the makings of a break. Here we go, one more time. So all I did was decide to do a different roll. 
Jim, how do you know what role to play? You just pick one. You just pick one. It doesn't matter which one. You just pick a role. You go for it. So I picked that I was, when I went back to that F, I decided that I was going to do an alternating role. Why? I don't know. I hadn't done one in a minute. And I thought, well, let's just do an alternating role there. It's, it's not, it's not, it's not rocket surgery. You can, I mean, you just, you just pick something. And here's the thing. If you pick something and it's, and it's awful, nobody gets hurt and, and you just, you pick something else the next time. So watch this. So we got, so we're going to do alternating rolls, forward and reverse. Okay, we're going to do forward and reverse. Forward and reverse. We're going to slide. Forward and reverse. Uh, forward and reverse again because, well, why the heck not? And then we're going to hammer back to our F because those sound good, and we're going to do a forward and reverse. And now we're going to do something different because, well, we're bored of forward and reverse. Let's do something different. So we're going to, what, what other role we know? Alternating role. We should be real comfortable with that about this point. And so I'm just going to hammer that fourth string. You don't have to. You don't have to hammer, but you can if you want to. And then we can hammer that third string. And then let's go to C because that's where it goes in. And what we want to do in C, uh, let's do a forward in reverse. Why? Because we just did some alternatings and it would be nice to have a pattern going on. So here's what we got for our break so far. Let's see. C, forward in reverse. And a forward in reverse off the four. Why? Because, well, we just decided that, that might sound good. At some point, I experiment and, and I try different things. And this is how you know what works. I mean, how you know when you've put too much salt in your beans? How you know? You got to put too much salt in them and try it. And then you say, okay, that's too much salt. So next time you're a little, little less salty. So that's pretty important. So here we go. great one. It's not a fantastic kickoff. It's nothing that anybody is ever going to say, oh man, I've got to learn that kickoff. No, nobody, nobody cares. And because it's not that great, but here's what it is. It's functional. It works. It fits the song. And now when I go back to band practice with Mary and she says, all right, kickoff, uh, hold home place. Remember, I do that in F. I got, I got a break in F. Key of F. I got a break. It's not great, but... There it is. We have now learned this in the key of F. Honestly, until today, I had never really tried to play it at F. Mary did it in E flat, as I, as I fondly remember. But, you know, but we used F just as an example, and I wanted to do it in a key that I had never done it in just to show you the process that I go through. So how, how could we fancy it up? We could do something like... So we do an 
alternating roll with a hammer. A chord. And the second part basically is just chords. What have they done to the old days? Goes to the two. In G, we went to A. In F, we're going to go to G. Why did they tear it down? So that's how this works. And, and you can do this in any key, whatever you wanted to do. I mean, you know, if you wanted to learn it in C, but you, first you got to figure out your chord changes. And then you just start noodling with the chord changes until you start hearing melody notes. Once you hear melody notes, then you have to find ways to emphasize the melody notes. Then once the note, then, then at that point, you just got to kind of, you just kind of got to stick it all together. It, you know what you got to do? You just got to try. You just got to try. Just try. So many people are afraid to try. And, and, and that, you know, that's kind of a little pet peeve of mine. It's like, just do the thing. Just try. But Jim, what if it's not any good? Who said it was supposed to be good? <laughs> I, this isn't good. This is just eh. I mean, it's just eh. It's just, it's just something to try. So hope, hopefully that helps you all. Uh, any questions about what I just did? Any at all? Because, you know, I, that's why I'm here. And I, and I just felt like this would be a, a better format to do a lesson like this. Because, I mean, whether I've done an F, whether I've done a B flat, whatever key, the process is exactly the same. All right, let me read some questions here. Ah, let's see. <laughs> Gerald, you said it was supposed to be good. It's not good, but well, there it is. You know, yeah, that's kind of a thing. Uh, Mason, hopefully that helps. I mean, you're, you're at a point now where you're going to be picking and excuse me while it looks like we're having another earthquake. Uh, Mason, did you feel the earthquake a couple weeks ago? Um, anyway, let's see. Mason and I live close together, and, and this area is not really particularly known for earthquakes, but we, we, had, a, we had a tiny one over. Uh, Epicenter was not too far from us, and, uh, but, you know, it was, well, epicenter for me was probably about 
three or four miles away, and uh, I certainly felt it here. Uh, I actually went downstairs to see who slammed the front door. It was like, okay, who's come in the house and slammed the door? And there was nobody. Uh, it, it, was, it was just, you know, sounded like that. Anyway, uh, so no questions regarding the, uh, the lesson on how to, how to figure, out, figure out a key, a different key, learning in a different key. If not, that's cool. Uh, What banjo would I recommend for a beginner? Uh, always five string. I'm always gonna recommend a five string. And I mean, unless you wanna learn to play Irish tenor or Dixieland jazz or something else. But I mean, I play five strings, so I, you know, that's kind of my, it's kind of my thing. Uh, and as far as banjos, look at the uh, Recording King Dirty 30s line. Uh, they start about $200. Uh, Mustang. Oh, I got a great voice. Thank you. I, I have a voice. I'm not afraid to use it. <laughs> uh, Randy, yeah, absolutely. You know, but just just remember, it, 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 for the most part, the steps are simple. Find the chords, figure out what melody works closest to those chords, and then just go for it. That's what Earl did. That's exactly what Earl did. And everybody, you know, it was like this great, wonderful thing that he did. And people were like, well, that's just amazing. And it is, but it's but it, it's pretty much what Earl did. He took the tune, found the chords, played the roles, and then figured out what notes in those roles kind of worked best. And sometimes you have to try different roles to hit those melody notes in the right spots. Kind of like we did in this one where we used forward and reverse and alternating roll. But we could we could experiment further. And like if, you know, if I knew that I was always going to be playing this thing in F, then I would certainly, I would certainly be considering, uh, you know, polishing it more and trying different roles and different things in different places just to, just to, to hit more melody notes. Because that, play, it's never wrong to play the melody. There's, there's you one from the gospel of Panky. It's never wrong to play the melody. <laughs> uh, Peter, yeah, Nashville number system definitely helps sort that out because it helps you kind of quickly figure out what chords are next. This is exactly how I did it here. I mean, I knew F, and then I knew three away from F was, and then I knew, I mean, for, for my four. So I, yeah, it, it definitely helps. Which way would I say put my hand? I'm not quite sure. I'm not quite sure what you mean, Olivia. Uh, David Lum, you asked a question and I think I accidentally hit the wrong button but about the area code 615 and uh, Cowboys and Indians, yes, they're, they're kind of similar. <laughs> uh, and I, I didn't mean to hide it. That was not, that was not my intention if I did. Uh, my bad. Let's see. <laughs> I'm driving my fingerboard with finger picks. It doesn't always... Um, that, that means I'm driving with my pinky and ring finger. Uh, Shirley, what 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 do you mean? Which way would I say to put your hand? I mean, it's just you know. Oh, let's see if I can twist y'all down here again. I mean, there's my right hand. In the left hand.
here's the uh, old home place in the key of C. <laughs> And that one, I, you know, that one, so there's, there's my break to Old Home Place. That was the kickoff we did, something like that, back when I was a youngster. in their right hand like the great JD used to. <laughs> well, yeah, you know, a lot of people do that. You know, if so watch Tim Stafford. He's a guitar player, but watch Tim Stafford play guitar. He uh he holds I mean, he Tim started out as a banjo player, wanted to be JD Crow, and so his his guitar right hand looks a lot like JD's right hand. Gerald, yeah, cool, yeah, yeah, bookmark it, whatever. I, it, it won't go away. I, I may go back through and try to edit bits and pieces of it out to create an actual YouTube lesson. I don't know, maybe not. I may just leave it just like it is. Folks keep, folks need to come and experience me live, you know? Uh, uh, Shirley, it, it's the old home place is the song. Uh, Uh, Gerald, yeah, you know, my, my son plays banjo, but, you know, he's, he's grown. <laughs> Let's see. Oh, you're, you're talking to Mormuza. The banjo isn't very popular instrument. Mormuza, where are you, man? Uh, <laughs> going to play tennis. Tennis, banjo, it's all the same, man. It's all the same. <laughs> all right, folks. Well, if y'all don't have any any great questions, you know, or any great questions. I, I don't mean that that way. I mean, if there's anything that's really bugging you that you that you want to know as far as playing in different keys, feel free to feel free to ask because that's that's why I'm here. Netherlands. So you know, there are some pretty good pickers over in the Netherlands, though. Uh, I, I know of, I know of a few. Uh, but yeah, they are. It's definitely few and far between there. So this is going to be up all night. It, this will be up until I. Uh, it, it'll be up until somebody other than me deletes it. Uh, Bob Perrin, I love California. I like you know, I you know. Of course, my son's not out there anymore, so I don't. I don't get the. Uh, you know, there's no real reason for me to visit California at the moment other than maybe come jerk Greg Rich around a little bit. But, yeah, you know, I, I enjoy I enjoy being out there when I'm out there. Will I ever come to Scotland? So it's just a matter of money. Uh, you know, I, I would love to do, so let me just pitch this out here again. I would love to do, you know, workshops, classes or whatever in Scotland, in Ireland, in, in, you know, Wales, wherever, you know, especially where English is spoken, because I don't, you know, other than Pig Latin and Ubby Dubby, I don't have any other language skills. And, uh, but I would love to do that. It's just a matter of getting enough students to pay, just to pay my way. You know, I, you know, I got to cover airfare, got to cover a place to stay, unless somebody wants to put me up and, you know, I'm easy, so definitely, definitely would, I would totally be into, I'd love to come to Scotland, I really would. I've been to Ireland a couple of times, I uh, would definitely love to go to Scotland, and Wales, and England. 
I'd love to come to the Netherlands. Uh, just anywhere. Uh, <laughs> I just, I mean, just get me out of here. Help. You know, I'd love, I, you know, love to go to uh, down under too, Australia, New Zealand. Uh, I'm, I'm willing to travel, but we, we got to make the dollars work. So, you know, that, I mean, at the very least, you know, if it can turn out to be a paid vacation, that, that would be nice. You know, if I can cover my expenses and, and put a little bit of money in my pocket for the, for the effort. Yeah, I'm, I'm totally up for it. So, you know, so let's keep that in mind, you know, talk to your, talk to your friends and say, Hey, if we, if we, if we can cover Jim's expenses, you know, and keep him fed and give him a place to stay, then we can probably get him to come and hang out with us and teach us for a weekend or so. So keep that in mind. Uh, Gerald, where in, excuse me, where in Australia are you? I, I know, I know a few pickers down that way, uh, but, but not, not a ton, but yeah. And the problem, the problem with problem with all the Australian pickers, y'all are, you know, it's kind of like United States as far as size of the country. It's huge. And y'all are so spread out. I mean, it's just, I mean, it's just like, you know, I've got, I've got friends up near Sydney. I've got friends like in, uh, Launceston in Tasmania. I've got, I mean, just friends all scattered up the uh, East coast. And I know there's some pickers over around Perth too. So, I mean, it's, it's huge and it, it, it would you know like if i came to australia that would be it'd be a lot of it'd be a lot of driving a lot of traveling let's see Yeah, how, how do you find out how many are interested? I, I don't know. You know, that's like, I don't, I'm, I, I'm not, I'm not really a good promoter, you know, and especially if I'm not in the area, it, it would be hard to, for me to, 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 to judge that. Like when I did the Ireland tour with a couple of different bands, we had promoters in Ireland that knew the area and knew where to book gigs. So that was, that was easy, but that was a different kind of situation. I wasn't exact. I wasn't teaching. I only, I did one workshop while I was there. Uh, sponsored by Recording King. Well, I, I, I can talk to Recording King about it. You know, it's just like, I mean, <laughs> let's see. Major differences between banjos made in the U.S. banjos made outside the U.S. It just really depends. I mean, like, okay, so this this recording king, it's USA built, it's USA made. Uh, you know, and the workmanship is fantastic. I mean, everything everything is just you know fairly perfect. I mean, there's a few things that are not exactly perfect. Of course, you know, it's handmade by a person. But and then compared to my RK35, which was made in China. Uh, there's things about it that look Chinese, but as far as sound and playability, I don't really notice a lot of differences. So that's, that's something to consider. Uh, I mean, the biggest difference between a USA-made instrument and one made at Packram is uh, cost. Uh, let's see here. Is there any keys that don't work together? I mean, like chords that don't fit together? Yeah, kind of, sort of. I mean, but every, you know, everything, everything, everything works to a certain degree. It's just, it's, it's, it's just a matter of how you use it. I mean, like, you know, with old home place, you know, we're in G to B to C. I mean, it, so B isn't usually a chord you think of when you're playing in the key of G, but it does work if you use it right. Uh, Banjo for Life, I'm in Chattanooga area quite a bit. Uh, that, I mean, I, I, 
closest big city to me is Chattanooga. So, yeah, I'm, you know, as far as in Tennessee, I guess that technically counts. You know, I'm in Chattanooga area quite a bit for one thing or another. Not always music, but it, it's it's nearby. Uh, how old was I when I started playing? I was probably 13. Uh Peter, I, I'm, I'm very familiar with the 37, and I, I'd kind of like to have one. You know, it's the uh, maple version with a sunburst and a gloss finish. They're beautiful, and, and that that would totally be my jam. I, I, would, I, I don't know if they still make that one or not, but it was only made, I think the only place I ever saw them for sale was at Tom Ann in Germany. Uh, but yeah, that's pretty, pretty cool. I'm going to bail out of here. Uh, maybe download this and see if there's bits and pieces that we can use elsewhere. But other than that, uh, y'all y'all pick, play a lot, do some stuff, go do the thing. Don't be afraid to try. Uh, let's see. Can I leave you with a word of advice? Life advice. Let's see. Uh oh, there's a question. Oh, okay. Gospel song. Yeah, I grew up playing in church. Uh, so I'm real familiar with most everything out of the hymnal to a certain degree. Uh, all right, folks, y'all behave. Hey, and uh, if you're carrying around tomorrow, uh, no, if you're carrying around yesterday, put that stuff down. It's heavy. Yesterday's heavy. Drop that. Move on. All right. We'll see y'all. Bye.